Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and in this video I'm going to be taking you on a painting journey up to one of our favourite spots, Three Cornered Cops in the UK, for some plein air sketching, followed up by a finished piece painted for you in the studio which will be inspired by all the lovely things which we saw on our walk. This is the finished painting up on this top right corner and below is my sketchbook filled with all the lovely bits and bobs we saw. So uh, without any further ado, come on a walk with us. The sun was out and shining beautifully and so were all the wildflowers. I just couldn't resist stopping to photograph these beautiful dandelions. I know some folks call them weeds but they are just so important in these spring months for the bees, just giving them that extra little pollen boost. Um, and besides, I think they're so pretty, um, I just couldn't resist stopping to take a few pictures and get a little bit of extra footage as well. also came across these beautiful bright pockets of gorgeous bluebells which are just so special to see at this time of year. The entrance to Three Cornered Cops is not exactly what you might expect uh, when you happen across a pocket of protected woodland but uh, a short walk up this stony path will lead you past uh, even more <laughs> even more beautiful wildflowers and lots of overhanging trees and beautiful goodness. Uh, I couldn't help but stop again to uh, show you this beautiful wild alkanet I think it is. These lovely little blue sparks of joy popping up alongside the path. As you can see it is a lovely little walk takes you about 100 yards up the path and uh, soon you'll find the entrance to this uh, little protected pocket of woodland. It's a beautiful place to be at any time of year, but during spring it was just bursting with life. Wildflowers greeted us at every turn, new spring leaves springing up along the branches of these lovely old trees, along with the sound of blackbirds and wood pigeons among the treetops. We even found this tiny little wild strawberry plant nestled within the roots of this gorgeous big old tree. It's very tempting to pop back in autumn to see if it's produced any strawberries, but quite honestly, I should probably leave them for the birds.
we found a place to sit and uh, I began to sketch. I'm using just a very basic little A5 watercolour sketchbook. This one is by C. White of Brighton. Uh, I like the A5 size as it's fantastically portable. You can just chuck it in a backpack or in a large pocket and the, uh, the watercolour paper means you can throw some paint on it as well, which is what I did later. before the light faded, once I'd finished doing my little sketches, uh, as it was time to return home back to the studio to turn my speedy pencil scribbles into a proper painting, which I'm going to demonstrate for you in just a moment. It really did feel so good to get out in the fresh air, enjoying that lovely spring sunshine and just getting a bit of spontaneous sketching done. I brought my sketchbook and pencil on the off chance on our walk today and I was just so happy that I did because quite honestly the inspiration was everywhere. Returning home to the studio I chose a block of watercolour paper to work on that was roughly a similar size to the uh, page that I'd filled up in my sketchbook. I'm just going to show you here. I slapped a bit of paint roughly onto that pencil sketch and this is what I came up with. On the left is uh, just a little bit of detail work of some of the pretty little flowers and plants we passed on the way. Some bluebells, dandelions, forget-me-nots, daisies and teasels. And uh, on the right is my rough sketch of the beautiful trees in three-cornered cobs. So I transferred the loose shape of that lovely tree and a couple of lines for the horizon onto my uh, watercolour block. I'll uh, pop all the details of everything I'm using uh, in this proper painting uh, in the video description below as per usual. So the first step for me was just washing the top two thirds of this paper uh, with some clean water ready to paint in a really nice simple blue sky. I'm bringing the, uh, the water right down to the horizon line because I want to paint some nice wet and wet foliage as well. But we're going to do the sky first and I began with some cerulean blue. I'm using the uh, large mop brush rather than uh, a flat because I find it gives me a little bit more control on this size of paper. This is some indigo going in here, only a very small amount at this point because it's quite a powerful colour as you can see there and I'm just using it to um, just soften down some of the brightness that you get in that cerulean. It can be a little fierce sometimes and I just wanted a really nice soft, soft spring looking sky without that heady Mediterranean style blue that you can sometimes get from cerulean. So it's as simple as that, a nice simple sky. 
I'm using uh, the brush again to add a little bit of water along that horizon line so I don't get any hard lines. We can blend in my uh, foliage and my foreground and get a nice soft line. I'm using some raw sienna here and uh, some perillion green to uh, fill in the foreground. Again, I'm painting wet and wet to uh, get these colours to blend and just overall get some really, really nice soft uh, edges. Now the perylene green is very dark as you can see here. It can be used with plenty of water like I did before to just create a really nice foreground for a landscape. I'm also just using the paint a little bit more richly here to uh, add some simple loose foliage across the front of this painting. So you can see all I'm doing is just working with the shape of the mop brush and just creating some interesting uh, directional marks all along the foreground here. I'm using richer paint as well just so that it doesn't um, just basically blend or dissolve too heavily into the wash that's already there. And alongside the perylene green I'm using some more indigo as well. This time using it a little thicker, a little darker. I find it helps to just really uh, create those lovely darks and shadows. It's a really helpful little colour. And now whilst that paint is still wet, I'm putting a really light just wash of green across the top of this horizon line here. So I'm going to have a little bit of distant hedgerow in the background. And I'm just putting this in really softly. As you can see, we're still getting that lovely blended edge uh, going in wet and wet against the sky. Here you can see as well, I'm just adding a little bit more raw sienna into the foreground. I just decided to try and blend out that sort of large patch of darker green there and just soften it into the rest of uh, that sort of grassy foreground which uh, did end up quite pale. And now I'm happy with that, I'm just adding a few more little interesting loose marks into uh, the paint here in the foreground. Um, as you can see I'm still just about working <laughs> wet and wet. The, uh, the paper is still wet but nowhere near as wet as it was when I started painting so we're getting a lot less diffusion and uh, the shapes that I'm creating are sort of staying as they are. They're not sort of blooming or bleeding out into the rest of the paper which is why I'm just using the very tip of my mop brush to just spike in a little bit of extra green and this is how it looks like now that it's dry. You can see those shapes have remained uh, pretty crisp but with a slight soft edge still from the wet and wet. I'm really pleased with how uh, this foliage has uh, come out. So it's time now to add our main feature which is this beautiful old tree. Uh, the same shape as the one that I uh, sketched from Three Cornered Cops not 100% certain on the, um, the species of tree. I believe it could be a beech because I know there are a lot of beech trees uh, in that area so that would be my hunch. However, um, I am not a tree expert so if anybody uh, spots any recognisable trees in the footage from earlier please leave a comment and let me know. To paint the bark on this lovely tree, I'm using a mixture of Van Dyke Brown with a little perylene green and some raw sienna mixed in and just created this lovely sort of sludgy, dark, natural looking colour. And I'm using my large sword liner brush to get these sort of wispy, wiggly branches coming out from the main trunk here. Of course you don't need to use the uh, sword liner brush. Any sort of uh, long thin brush will do at this point but it does help to have a brush with quite a long uh, bristles or at least a decent water holding capacity so you can get these lovely long loose lines without having to constantly go back and dip your brush into the paint and water over and over again. It just makes it a lot more fun to paint. <laughs> So 
So at this point I'm still working from my sketchbook uh, for the shape of this lovely old tree. It was one that really caught my eye while I was out at Three Cornered Cops because it was very sort of long and lean on the right hand side. See here I'm pulling these branches along um, across the paper but the branches on the left were quite sort of shorter and twiddy, almost looked as if they'd been cropped. And I just thought it made a really lovely addition to a painting. It was very uh, sort of sculptural, um, which is why I chose that tree in particular to sketch. Although uh, <laughs> you can guarantee that I'll be back there sketching away on a different tree on another day. So now I'm just adding some uh, loose clusters of green foliage across the tops of these branches here. I'm using a mixture of perylene green and some raw sienna blended together to do this. And you can see here that I'm using my mop brush and uh, just dabbing quite lightly across the paper with the, uh, the very tips of the bristles to create these interesting textural shapes. I'm also doing this whilst some of the paint that I use for the branches is still a bit wet. You can see it's all sort of blooming and blending together, which I think is a really nice effect for this uh, kind of painting. So now you can see I'm just coming in with a little bit of extra raw sienna here and just dotting it lightly among the branches just to get a little bit of an interesting uh, colour differentiation here. And now using the same technique with the mop brush, just using the uh, just the bristles very lightly, you can see I'm just lightly tapping it um, against the foreground here to create these almost sort of stamped shapes that turn into the loveliest of loose foliage marks. You can see here I'm holding the brush at an angle and I'm literally only placing the uh, sort of tip of the bristles onto the paper and it's leaving these lovely little fresh marks and I really, <laughs> really enjoy doing this a little bit too much. Perhaps I possibly uh, did too many of these marks, but uh, oh well, painting is all about the joy, isn't it? It's all about doing what you love and what you enjoy and uh, I certainly really enjoyed uh, painting this one. So now I'm just using the sword liner again to add a few extra clean marks across the foreground. These are going to be turned into teasels a little bit further down the line. Um, I'm also going to use the sword liner to paint in um, a sort of tall slender tree on the right hand side of the paper using exactly the same technique as I've just showed you. But uh, in order to not make this video too dreadfully long, um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit with the filming and show you the finished tree. There we are. So you can see I used exactly the same technique uh, with the uh, same colours to sort of pull these sort of long slender trees out on the right. Or at least you could see them if my hand wasn't in the way, my apologies. Uh, and again use the same technique with the mop brush to dash a little bit of foliage across those branches. But now here I am filling in these teasels um, using a small brush and I'm just basically using the long slim lines that I put in using the sword liner just a moment ago and just giving them these little spiky tops. I'm using a, um, a size zero small uh, liner brush here from uh, Da Vinci. It's a lovely little brush but um, at this point any thin brush will uh, work well for this. So at this point it's just all about those little final finishing touches. So I've added a few more teasels 
I'm now adding a couple of really simple little sort of dried up seed heads here, little decorative ones. Again, just using this really um, small liner brush. And it's really up to you what choice of uh, little decorative touches you add at this point. These are the things I love to paint, so I have included them. If you have things that you prefer to paint, little flowers or reeds, rushes, that sort of thing, then by all means uh, include those instead. I'm also adding some lovely bright bluebells really loosely. I'm using lavender coloured paint. Uh, we use Holbein lavender and I've mixed it with a little bit of opaque white gouache which means that I can paint it over this really dark colour here. And you can see I've just using my uh, small liner brush again and just gently dotting the colour in, keeping it really nice and loose and just adding these little clusters of brightness across the foreground. I was determined to include some of the beautiful flowers that we saw when out on our walk uh, in this painting. Um, it was either these or dandelions and uh, the blue was calling to me today, so bluebells it is. Because this is such um, a relatively small painting, um, I'm not focusing on doing the uh, precise sort of shape of the bluebells, sort of each individual flower. I'm mo mostly just focusing on creating sort of the impression of a beautiful sl slender stem of bluebells. And just because I couldn't resist, I'm adding uh, a little bit of splatter detail using my fan brush, again using the same bluebell colour just for a scattering of stray blooms across the bottom corner as well. And now just for a finishing touch, I'm adding in a pair of wood pigeons. They were so loud during our walk, it was so lovely to hear them calling among the treetops, so I thought, why not uh, add a couple of simple little shapes soaring into that lovely blue sky. So here is the finished painting alongside the sketchbook full of inspiration. Thank you everybody for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video today, something a little different. I had uh, so much fun um, and I hope you enjoyed coming on our walk with us and seeing the uh, painting to come to life from first uh, inspiration up to the finished piece. If you'd uh, like to see more of this style of videos, then uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but that's all from me this week, so I hope that wherever you are and whatever you're up to, you have a wonderful rest of the week and I look forward to seeing you all again soon and happy painting.